This project is concentrated around the discovery of a medieval ship back in 2002 here in Newport uh, on the edge of the River Usk, a tributary of the Severn Estuary, an unusual and unexpected archaeological discovery made during building works. And this extremely rare survival of a medieval ship which has been rescued and is being recorded, conserved and analysed, a partnership between the university and the local museum. We recovered the ship as thousands of individual timbers, the component parts of this complex medieval machine. Since their recovery, we've had to hold them in water while we clean them, record them digitally, and then we need to actively conserve them in order to, to allow them to go on display. Once we've recorded the material, it's not stable. Waterlogged timber would just dry out and fall apart. So it's undergoing a process of active conservation, replacing the water with synthetic waxes and then uh, freeze drying. And that process of documentation has taken several years. Conservation will take several more years. And then we have to think about a museum display and the reassembly of the ship will be another major phase of the project. Because of the huge scale of the documentation process, we took an approach using digital technologies, which allow us to record each individual timber in three-dimensional digital space, producing a CAD file containing key features of every ship's timber. This has been a great way of recording thousands of timbers, which we hope will create an electronic archive for other researchers but equally it's allowed us to explore digital and physical modelling using rapid prototyping, for instance, to produce our models so that they're visible to the public and allow us to explore research directions in a digital environment as well. When the ship was discovered, there was a huge local community-based campaign, the Save Our Ship campaign, where citizens from the newly designated city of Newport banded together and uh, encouraged, campaigned, marched, petitioned for the ship to be saved. And that uh, campaign was successful. That led to the ship being rescued and recovered for study. And it's been 10 years since the ship's discovery. And during that time, essentially, we've been carrying out research, documenting and trying to understand the ship. And AHRC funding has been used to make some of the research that we've been doing very visible. A lot of this research would normally have happened behind the scenes and we need to maintain interest to feed information to that very hungry community audience and one of the ways that we've been doing that is to make some of our research far more visible and allow people to engage with that and ask their own questions. The modelling is a key step for us as nautical archaeologists to understand the original shape of the ship, how it behaved cargo carrying capacity. These are key questions that nautical archaeologists need to ask and the digital modelling is helping us to address those. But equally it's proving very useful in demonstrating to a wider audience one what research we're undertaking which is often less than visible but also helping us to ask some of those wider questions that the public are interested in. What was the ship like? What was it for? What did it look like? And indeed, how are we going to display it in the future? It's essential that we try and make our research in what is a very long-term program visible. And AHRC funding has been part of that package of making the new discoveries, new understandings transmitted to that broader uh, community. Uh, the next big stage, of course, is looking to beyond conservation to display. And again, we want to use the uh, assets that are produced through funding, uh, through exhibition, through modelling, to ask people some of those important questions about what sort of a museum do they want, how do they want their ship displayed. One of the greatest values of the AHRC funding research, apart from the fact that it's uh, focused on particular stages in the research work, is the way in which it's helped us to leverage additional funding from other sources on long-term projects large-scale projects like this running over decades, we need to be accessing funding from a variety of bodies. But it's that key ability for the AHRC funding to deliver for us on the specifics of core research, which we can then draw out into other areas of activity to use as a basis 
So already AHRC funding is helping steer our vision of how we would see a museum display develop. But it's also acting as a springboard for other sources of funding from Kamal, the Federation of Museums in here in Wales, and other bodies. So it's value-added finding out which elements of a project AHRC can fund which not only delivers that piece of research but allows us to open up other avenues of research funding. Thank you.